Hey, hey, clinicians, this is Private Practice, and this is my first go at doing a Facebook Live as one of these videos. So everything about me is completely and utterly terrified right now, and we're going to have a door slam because it would have been sensible to shut the door before I got on the Facebook Live. So if you're watching and you're here today, please come say hi and let me know because I think one of the biggest problems with me doing a Facebook Live is I'm terrified that nobody will turn up. Absolutely terrified that no one will turn up and what does that say about me? Because obviously if nobody turns up to a this is private practice video then that means that nobody's watching them and that means I'm terrible and that means I'm a fraud and all of those awesome things that we talk to ourselves about. Which is never very helpful is it? So it's Monday here in the land of Oz and it's been a fairly hectic start to the week. Can I say that? I was on a train oh, at about 7.30 this morning, training out my way into the city, the city of Sydney, in case those of you don't know where I'm accessing. And um, I went to a professional development event uh, run by a rheumatologist who was talking about chronic pain syndromes and different types of autoimmune diseases. So that was pretty interesting, something a little bit close to my heart. Some people might not know that I get to live with chronic pain. Yay me. What was really confronting about that today was uh, the attitudes of the other people in the room who some of them were health professionals, some of them were medical claims assessors. It was, it was like I heard all of my judgments about myself <laughs> verbalized by other people. But that's neither here nor there. We get, we get over that and that, that gives us an opportunity for change and an opportunity to educate. What I was looking forward to though in that forum today was not just listening to the content that was being provided but listening to the questions that were being asked by the other participants. That was going to give me some really good clues about the types of things that I can be blogging on and writing on and just to find out where my clients or customers might be at in terms of their understanding. Because one of the things we are awesome at as clinicians is thinking that our knowledge and expertise is common sense and that everybody knows it, therefore it's not special. So we actually start a conversation with a client too far along the continuation continuum of, of progression. So they, we might think we're starting at zero when, when in reality they're back at minus 10 and, and we're very quickly moving them on to plus 10. So we need to make sure that we're meeting our clients where we're at. And this is a massive problem I see with a lot of people's online copywriting uh, and their marketing material is they're talking to people who have actually been through something that they've got no knowledge about or they're using language that they're like, huh, I don't even know what that is. Um, so one of my favorite questions to ask private practice consultants or sorry, private practitioners is um, what are the five things you wish people knew about you and your service before they got in the room? And that gives you a really good clue about the types of things that you need to be educating people on before they get into the room with you. Also gives you information on what information products you can be creating, what you could be blogging on, uh, what your social media content could be about. So you're educating people and you're helping build that relationship, that trust. And I can see that people have joined, hurrah, I'm not alone. That's very, very cool. So I had this whole thing planned today that I was going to talk about um, goals and the end of quarter one and how you're going with your goals. And then I decided that that was really boring and dry because I started trying to write a blog about it. Uh, so we're not going to talk about that. What I wanted to share with you today is a really interesting demonstration of the significance that our knowledge and skills brings. So there's this saying around and I don't know where it came from but just use what's in your hand and look at the significance that you can create or the difference you can make if you use something that's in your hand. So we all know that I'm fairly well connected and I love connecting pe different people all the time. And I have this amazing connection to Cambodia. I've never been to Cambodia, but for some reason I am connected to people providing services and doing amazing things to this incredibly um, <laughs> this hurting nation, this nation that basically had its entire national psyche ripped out of it and, and people trying to heal. So you might be aware that I've, um, I've worked with the OIC uh, organization who provides speech and language services 
because there are none inside of Cambodia. Well, there are now because OIC put them there. And I've also got a friend of mine who I've developed a friendship with who runs a childcare centre called Mother's Heart. So women are being rehabilitated or brought out of sexual slavery and their kids have somewhere to be looked after while these women are learning other skills apart from sex trafficking, which is really cool. So this friend of mine who is the child care centre director and, and actually is hands on with the kids spoke to me and said, Joe, how, do, how can we help this? We've got a three year old coming into the centre who is completely nonverbal and he looks like he's got cerebral palsy. So together we worked out how he could access occupational therapy and some physiotherapy. Now, this, this, this is not big city stuff and these are not services that turn up every day. This is unusual for this population. That, it's, that is the sort of stuff that you only get if you're in the big city and if you're very, very wealthy. We could not find any speech therapy services for this kid who's nonverbal, who's causing difficulties because he's getting big and his grandmother doesn't want to know what to, doesn't know what to do with him and he's at risk of being abandoned, he's at risk of neglect. So I, she's, we worked out that there's a private practice attached to the OIC that if I purchased an assessment, we could get a, a speech pathologist to travel up to this childcare centre and assess this young child. So I thought, that's awesome. Let's make that happen. It was a hundred bucks, really a hundred US dollars. It's not a big chunk of money, but I thought, wow, if we could actually start helping really little children access speech therapy services, what an amazing gift that's going to be to that family, to that community, to that child. What I didn't know was going to happen was the speech pathologist turned up and did the assessment with all the educators that are in that centre. So not only did that child get an assessment and get a diagnosis, they got a treatment program that now three or four different people can implement. Beyond that, these workers in this childcare centre are, are now able to assess and help other children who come in with some level of communication disorder. They know what to look for. Look for. So look at that. How far that hundred dollars has gone. That that it's not about the fact that I gave the hundred dollars. It's about connecting the right people at the right time. It's about looking at the broadness that our influence has. And one of the things I often say to health professionals is that we're not just needed, we're necessary. Because if we can help somebody learn to control their anger and they go home and create a more loving environment and a safe environment for children, then those children are going to be less likely to go to school and act out or become bullied at school. So then we have a school being influenced and we have workplaces being influenced and we have sports after school being influenced and then we have marriages being influenced and then we have communities being influenced. So if you're ever, ever feeling like your skills aren't worth anything, your knowledge isn't worth anything, you're just same, 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 everybody knows how to do what I do, please stop, get out of your head and go make a difference in someone's life because the skills and the knowledge that you have is so much bigger than just you. We do have a responsibility to share it. And yes, we do have a responsibility to get paid well and look after ourselves and be wise with what we do as well. But I sometimes think that there is this disconnect where people feel like if they're asking for money or asking to be paid well and, and respected for what they know, that that somehow diminishes their influence or diminishes the um, you know the exposure that their therapy or their technique could have. So I was really thrilled to actually learn about that and find out that that's um, how that hundred dollars was used. So the hundred dollars treated this young man and educated three or four different childcare professionals to help them start to understand to deliver a speech therapy program and then start to gain knowledge around how they could talk to other parents about communication disorders in a country that has no speech pathology services. So I'm going to say hello to Margaret and Kylie who have turned up. Hurrah! It's nice to have you here. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me on my live today. Um, that's probably it from me today. I am going to have a go at doing more of these Facebook Live This Is Private Practice episodes. And to the gorgeous woman who has written to me on LinkedIn from Copenhagen, who has thanked me for these videos, I just want to say a massive thank you 
because that was the most encouraging email or LinkedIn mail that I got today, letting me know that you find so much encouragement from these videos. Thank you so much. So wishing you all a wonderful, wonderful week and do not forget your significance and your influence. So go use it well and be proud. Be proud of what you do.